Qatar has become quite the hub for Australian tourists and expats alike, with direct flights from Sydney and Melbourne, and also with a lot of British nationals transiting through the hub. Um, Maurice Payne, the Foreign Minister of Australia, has expressed that she's disgusted at the, disgusted at the reports that women were taken from uh, boarding a flight to Sydney and forcibly examined uh, to discover whether or not they'd had a child recently after a baby was allegedly found in airport bathrooms. Now, this has been denounced as a great violation of human rights against foreign nationals and Australian citizens. It's currently under investigation by the Australian Federal Police. So we look forward to the outcome of any inquiries that are made. But I think more importantly is the overall attitude of Qatar towards foreign nationals and towards Australians. And this again raises the case of Australian national uh, Joseph Sarlacc, who's been detained in the country for many years. Now, he's still in Qatar, even though he's been proven innocent of allegations of wrongdoing made against him. Now, the Australian government has been quietly working with him for a while, but no serious steps have been made to diplomatically secure his freedom and requests from the Australian government are falling on deaf ears in Qatar. Now, this same predicament is happening in the United Kingdom where diplomatic efforts are not strong enough to secure the release of citizens in Qatar who are currently being detained without cause. And this is not a situation where governments should stand by and say we don't get involved in foreign judicial systems. This, these are clear situations where the evidence fully exonerates the citizens who are being held in Qatar and that means that they can get involved in a foreign system by way of diplomatically raising an injustice with their counterparts. Now, given the strong relations between Australia and Qatar and Britain and Qatar, you would think that they would be able to exude that sort of pressure or incentive or otherwise to protect their citizens. Now, the fact that Qatar has felt confident enough to violate the rights of many Australian citizens on this flight to Sydney shows the kind of overall contempt and disrespect that Qatar has for the relationship with Australia and Britain. And that's something that those two Western countries need to fix before they can safely advise citizens that it's okay to travel through Qatar. Now, this incident is very disturbing and I think afterwards it's really going to impact Qatar's saleability as a tourist destination, but also as a transport hub. Australians should not want to travel through Doha or through Dubai, given the number of arrests that are made in transit and at the airport there. We also have Connor Howard, who's facing extradition to Qatar after traveling from Australia to the United Kingdom and um, being held up over a herb grinder that he was carrying and he was only in transit and yet this herb grinder which was completely legal and had no traces of any drugs or anything like that in fact Qatar let him travel onto the United Kingdom but then later decided to um, apply for extradition uh, from Greece for Connor Howard. So this is the kind of country that's sort of arbitrarily enforcing laws and certainly has no qualms about violating people's personal human rights. And this is something that we really need to be um, concerned about. And I think that Australians and British alike should consider boycotting Doha as an international transit hub and the same goes for 2022 unless we can see some serious changes in Qatar it's an unsafe place to be. Hi Connor.